Hey guys, welcome back to starting with Starling tutorial series. This is Hemant and let's continue today with a little bit of cleaning up of our previous code. We'll be using a little more assets from the sprite sheets we created. We'll also implement the navigation between the welcome screen and the in-game screen. Since I had this cleaning up and navigation to do, I'll handle the parallax scrolling of the in-game background in the next episode. First, let's take a look at the welcome screen and its assets we created in the initial stages. As you can see, all the assets used in the screen are individual PNG files embedded directly in the assets class. Let's start by cleaning it up by removing the embed code for each of them and pick the same assets up from the sprite sheets. Let me open the sprite sheet. It sure helps to know what the actual file names are and the corresponding assets. This mapping exists in the XML file. So I'll use these names in the code to be able to use the corresponding assets. The first thing I'll do is to get to the assets.as file in our Flash Builder project and delete the embed code for all the foreground assets used in the welcome screen. Note that I'm not deleting the background image. We don't have it part of the sprite sheet, so we'll use it as it is independently. So I'll select hero, title, play button, about button, and delete it. Let me open the welcome.as. Here in the draw screen method, we have called assets.getTexture to access the images. Instead, let's change it to assets.getAtlas.getTexture. Just as a recap, getAtlas function we defined returns an object of type TextureAtlas. TextureAtlas object has two methods, getTexture and getTextures. GetTexture is used to fetch single texture from a sprite sheet. GetTextures, the plural one, is used to fetch a vector object containing more than one texture. I'll copy this addition of getAtlas method call and paste it for all the assets except for background. I'll also need to change the strings I pass which has to be the same name that's there in the XML file. So welcome underscore title, welcome underscore hero, welcome underscore play button and welcome underscore about button. I'll save both the files and let me get back to hungryhero.as and change the initial screen back to game which in turn shows the welcome screen first. Let me save and run. You should see the exact same result you saw before. It's just that the foreground assets are now coming from the sprite sheets instead of individual PNG files. Good, let's write a simple code for navigating from welcome screen to the in-game screen. So let's talk about events. Now you already know that much of Starlink's events are very similar to AS3 events. We've also used added to stage and enter frame events before. I want to introduce a new event in Starlink called triggered. This comes from the starlink.events.event class. You can imagine this event to be similar to the click event you had in the mouse event class. Keep in mind that this event is not fired by sprites. These are fired by Starlink buttons. In our case, only play and about buttons fire this event. But you can listen to this event on a sprite containing these buttons. Let me show you. Now I said play and about buttons fire the triggered event. These two reside in the welcome class and this class is an extension of Starling sprite. So you can listen to event.triggered event on the welcome class. That means let's write a listener this dot add event listener of event dot triggered and call on main menu click. Let me define the method. Inside this method, let me trace event dot target as button. If I debug this, when I click on each of these buttons, it should trace object button and it is. 
if it is just one or two buttons you could listen to the event right on the button itself but if there are more buttons writing too many event listeners might not be a good practice so you might want to listen to this event in the parent sprite you can then write the if conditions to check what button was clicked and then write the remaining code so i'll add to the trace event dot target as button is equal to play button i'm making a check here if i debug this it should trace true once i click the play button fair i'll change the trace to if and i'll add a line about the condition where button clicked of type button is equal to event dot target as button now inside the if condition i can just check for button clicked instead of event dot target every time so here's where i'll write the code to change the screen we can also add an else if condition for the about button later to write the screen change code i'll demonstrate the very similar and simple custom event class extended from starlinks event class so let me create a new class i'll call that navigation event and put it in the package events i'll extend it from starlinks event class and inside this class i'll define a public static constant change screen of type string and assign a value change screen i'll also declare a public variable params of type object i'll use this variable to pass parameters to screens when we change them a classic example though we may not use in this game would be the level number every time you call the in game screen you would want to tell which level was requested so the in game screen can generate so many objects or set up the level according to the parameters Note that this is a basic example and I suggest you typecast your parameters strongly for your specific use cases. Now here in the constructor after the type parameter I'll accept the params object underscore params of type object and also assign null as the default value. I'll assign it to the parameter object of this class after the super call. So this dot params is equal to underscore params we are done with the event class let's dispatch our custom event when we click the play button what i'm trying to do here is our welcome and in game classes are children of the game class you can kind of consider the game class as the primary or the main class of our game even though hungry hero dot as is the main class for starling Game class is the primary class extended from Starling framework. So every time you click on a button in the welcome screen to change to another screen, we trigger a custom event. In this case, navigation event dot change screen, and the parent game class listens to it. It receives the parameter and shows the target screen and hides the previous screen. Later in the process. when we want to go back to the main menu or welcome screen from the in game screen we dispatch another event with parameter requesting to the game screen and then the game screen shows the target screen which will be the welcome screen so let me dispatch an event inside the on main menu click function this dot dispatch event the event will be a new navigation event and the type would be navigation event dot change screen and the params object would be a new object containing a string property called id with a value play as this is the action the player wants to perform let me also bubble this event all the way to the top Naturally inside the game class we need to listen to this event. So before adding any screens inside the on added to stage event listener function we'll write this dot add event listener and listen to events dot navigation event dot change screen. 
and we'll call the function on change screen. I'll define this method. So here I'll check switch event dot params dot id and if the case is play and I'll write a break. Now to be able to show the in-game screen, I'll need to define the in-game screen object in the game class. For this, I'll create a new private variable, screen in-game of type in-game. I'll initialize it in the on added to stage function. Screen in-game is equal to new in-game. This dot add child screen in game. Now, in the beginning, we'll need to hide the in game screen till the play button is clicked and show or initialize the welcome screen by default. We are showing the welcome screen by default by calling screen welcome dot initialize. So, let's hide the in game screen by writing screen in game dot dispose temporarily. And this is a custom method we'll define in the in-game class. Public function dispose temporarily and write this dot visible equal to false. So I'll just hide the screen for now. Later as we create more objects and interaction, we'll also be deleting the unnecessary objects and removing the event listeners of this screen inside this method. Okay, back to game.as. Now here in the on change screen function, if the case is play, I'll have to hide the welcome screen and show the in game screen. So I'll call screen welcome dot dispose temporarily and screen in game dot initialize. Let's define these functions in these classes. So inside welcome.as, I'll define public function dispose temporarily and write this dot visible is equal to false. Now, as I said before, since this screen already has an event listener for enter frame, I'm going to remove the event listener for float animation. If this dot has event listener event dot enter frame, then this dot remove event listener event dot enter frame and the method is hero animation. Now let's go back to the in game class and I'll create a function public function initialize and just set this dot visible equal to true. Right now this function looks empty but it'll fill up soon going forward. Okay, let's run this. You see the welcome screen by default and the in-game screen is hidden. And when I click the play button, the welcome screen is hidden and the in-game screen shows up. So we have done the basic screen management and navigation between the screens. Also, this method of managing screens isn't the only way. If you have written screen manager class or logic before, you can migrate it as it is to Starling just by using the classes in the Starling framework. This whole exercise was a very simple example of extending an event, dispatching an event and navigating between screens using just Starling APIs. And now that we have done this with the play button, I want you guys to try out a similar scenario for the about button, showing or navigating to the about screen. In the next episode, I'll start creating the parallax background scrolling, scroll the background elements based on a variable speed of hero and in later episodes, we'll add obstacles, items, do the hit tests and finally count and display the scores. 
i hope it has been helpful and see you in the next episode until then have a nice time